Hi guys, Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a cute Skinner Blend Abstract Flower Cake that we are going to use in a pair of earrings. So these are the colours that I've chosen and they're all souffle. So this one is Cornflower Blue, Pistachio and so 80s. And now you can use any brand of polymer clay uh, that you want for this. I'm using souffle because then we don't have to worry about sanding. Uh, this is supposed to be a nice, quick, easy project that you can turn into market jewellery, that you can sell easily, or just very easy gifts. It's supposed to just eliminate all of that sanding and um, tedious work uh, towards the end of the project. However, if you do want to use some other brands, such as Primo for instance, uh, you will want to sand after we have baked. And I'll talk more about that uh, once we have actually gotten to that point. So I've just taken all of my colours here, which were all rolled out to roughly about 2 millimetres thick. And I am going to cut them into more uniform triangle shapes. And any excess you can just pop straight back into your um, uh, clay packets. And now I've used about, uh, I'd say about one fourth of a two ounce block of clay. I do believe it is two ounce blocks, but it's the small blocks of souffle. However, how much clay you want is going to be dependent on how much clay, how much of a cane you're going to want at the end of this. So this is just a general guideline. Okay, and I'm just cutting them into these shapes so that we can form a nice even skin of it. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to be going with the blue in the middle, then up pink, and I'm going to leave a small amount of the blue pure over there, like so. And then I'm just going to cut that away, we don't need that. Same with that one, cut it away. Okay, then what I would recommend doing is taking your roller and just giving this a quick roll together before you put it through your pasta machine. And now I have shown in-depth tutorials on how to create a skin blend already. Uh, check out my YouTube channel or even my website, uh, jessimatutorials.com, to see how to create proper skin blends. And I'm going to show you what this looks like once we have turned it fully into a skin blend. Okay, and here it is. So now what I like to do is I'll just trim off these edges, because sometimes they will have little bits on them. Like for instance, this one's got a piece of pink on it. And just because they end up being a little bit craggly as well, which is something that I don't like. Okay. And then I also need you to straighten out this part over here. So that it's straight, like so. Okay, so this is about 2 millimeters thick at the moment. Now I want you to roll out a piece of white that is roughly half that size, so about 1 millimeter thick. And so if my, uh, let, let's say, the Skinner blend was rolled out on my thickest setting, that would be, um, then I would make the white on my middle setting of my pasta machine, roughly. But each uh, pasta machine is going to be slightly different with their thicknesses. Okay, and there we go. So you can see a skin of blend there. So what you could do is you could roll it from this end and then end up with a even skin of blend cake. But what I want to do is, uh, let's see, I'm actually going to decide quickly. Okay, so I actually want to do two things. So I'm going to cut off a section over here. And I'm going to put this aside, we will use it in a little while. And this one I'm going to run through my plaster machine on my thickest setting. And what I'm going to be doing is, I'm not going to be lengthening it, I want to widen it, so you want to put it through that way. Like so. And then I'm going to take it down two more settings. Like so. Then I want you to start with the white side and start curling over. So, we've got a little bit of... Uh, 
unwanted colors there so just shave those off okay and then just start rolling along the entirety of the length you can do this as tight as you can because you don't want uh, air bubbles there we go then press that over so that the white is contained there we go so now you have a jelly roll and as you cut through it you'll end up uh, having a skin blend and I'll show you how we're going to use that in a little while first what you want to do now is you just want to gently roll it to press everything together and to smooth out the seam that we have over here and I also want to take each side and press it in on itself so that we thicken up our cane and you want to do that be gentle when you're doing that and then roll again and bring it in some more and then roll again and this will just end up giving us a slightly thicker cane than we had before alright put that to the side and now the alternate version you can do is you can take this skin blend that we have over here and we actually roll from one end of the skin blend to the other side so that we get the entire skin blend inside of the jelly roll Just going to very quickly reduce that a little bit. Just pressing along those edges. Okay, now this one I'm going to leave as is. I quite like it the way it is. This one, however, I want to do something with it quickly. Okay, what I want to do is I want to use a card to press down into it so that we kind of create little petals and this needs to be as stout or uh, compact as you can get it okay. and because it's soft and we've been working with it it should be fairly easy to do that then take your card and I want you to press in like so then go a little way press in And just continue along the length of your cane and again this is optional don't have to do this okay and there we go we will have slight indentations I don't like to do too many of them and you can go deeper if you want but I like to only do it a little bit fairly shallow maybe you can see how deep we went there so that we still keep the core jelly roll okay. then I'm just gonna roll it so that we smooth out those um, seams I guess okay and then I want you to let that rest and the Skinner blend jelly roll as well we will let it rest but I can cut it quickly so you can see what it looks like on the inside there you go so you can see how that looks it's quite cute there's this one if I cut this end that is how it should look okay so you can see three different ends and two different ends and then as you cut through it you will um, continue to get different uh, colors in it which is quite interesting when you are doing a project so let those rest and I'm going to create the base for our earrings Okay, so I've rolled out a piece of black to about a millimetre thick and then I've rolled out a piece of white to probably about half a millimetre thick and I'm just going to stack those. Okay, and I'm just going to cut away most of the excess and because it's souffle it doesn't really stick to each other so you can peel it away pretty easily. Like so. And there we go so that is going to be our back for the moment anyway 
and I actually want to just stretch this out a bit because it's a little on the thick side for my liking since we're going to be putting canes on top of it as well. So I'm going to take it to my thicker setting which is about 2mm thick, roll it through and then take it down two more settings to about, about a millimetre and a half. I think. And there we go. So put that to the side and we want to start slicing our cane here. And I'm just going to just warm it up a little bit. Okay. I'm going to take those slices and I'm just going to pop them onto my uh, sheet here. And try not to have them overlap, just have them sitting next to each other. Okay, and I'm actually going to take off that and then continue slicing a bit here. So we move down to the next colour. And I will just continue doing that until I have used up uh, all the space on my veneer over here. Okay. So here are all the slices I took. So now I'm just going to press this back together. And you can see there how we've kind of got a progression. Okay, and there we go. Got our cane back together. And then what I want to do is I actually want to reduce this down quite a bit so we can stick some smaller jelly rolls in between those white gaps that have been left. So just take this and reduce it down. And it should go pretty quickly because it's quite soft. Then you're going to need to trim those ends. And then take, after just, there we go. And take your slices and pop them into those sections there. And if your cane is too soft, you can always just pop it into the freezer. That one's not working. So I might pop this into the freezer quickly. Okay. And then you'll want to slice. So that you can get to the next section and then continue placing your uh, smaller jelly roll pieces or kind of it's kind of an abstract flowery sort of jelly roll but continue placing those pieces then chop to the next section and you can just stick that onto the end of the cane like so and just continue doing that until you've filled in all of your little white spots. Okay, and there we go. So now take a piece of printing paper and place your veneer on top of it. Then take another piece of paper and just burnish it. Like so. And just continue doing that until you have a nice smooth finish on your piece and you can use your fingers or you can use your roller to rub don't roll just rub it and then just continue doing that until it's nice and smooth okay and there we go so you can see that I cut off the bottom part where we had this white keep that and just pop this to the side we will use that in a minute or two and just bring over another piece of paper and I'll bring over this little piece of excess that we have and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out my uh, Skinner Blend uh, Jelly Roll here. I'm just going to cut out a few pieces and I'm going to fill that length of white with the uh, pieces. And I'll just show you how to do that quickly. Very straightforward. Just want you to place them down like so. Okay, 
and then I want you to burnish that piece as well. So just grab another piece of paper and then just quickly give that a burnish until it's nice and smooth. And there we go. So now pop that to the side with the other piece and get out any uh, shape cutters that you want for your earrings. Okay. And so I'm going to be using my second largest arch cutter with my second largest circle Kemper cutter. So we'll start with the Kemper cutter. Actually no, no, we'll, we'll start with the arch cutter first. Okay, and I'm just making sure that this is uh, big enough, which it is not, so I'm just going to move down one size to which it should be pretty much big enough. So I am going to have to run this through the pasta machine just to make sure that it is the right size. So I'm just going to take it down to my thick, take it up to my thicker setting and I'm going to be stretching it. And roll that through. Like so. Then I'm going to take it down one more setting and stretch that again. And that should definitely fit. And this one actually fits now, which is what I want. Okay, now just check that it's nice and smooth. And I can see that there are some little imperfections that have shown up since we put it through the pasta machine. So just quickly burnish those out. Okay, now because this is on a piece of paper, it the clay will stick inside the cutters. So just bear that in mind. So just position it, cut down, and then you should be able to just pop that straight out. So that's one piece. Then we will repeat, cut. And didn't cut cleanly as I would like on that one section there. There we are. And then you should be able to just pop that straight out. And then I should be able to get two more out of this. There we go. Then I will move this to the side and I want to move uh, my earring pieces to a clean piece of printing paper to bake on. And now you can see on the edges here that we have a little bit of excess, but that we can clean up after they have been baked. It's very little there and it will be easier to do it with a craft knife. Okay. So I'm just going to put this aside for the moment. And I'm going to bring over our other piece over here. And I want to cut out four pieces with my Kemper cutter. One and that didn't go as well as planned. I don't really want it to stick in the camper cutter. See if you can get it out like so. If you can, that's great. Cut again. Okay, and that's how it didn't stick in the cutter. That's excellent. Because if it sticks in the cutter, do not use this press down mechanism. It will make a dent in the piece, and you do not want that. And now because I have all of these here, I did just cut them all out, and I want to see which one I like the best. Uh, which ones I like the best. So I do like these two over here. Uh, this one I chopped off a little bit of the white, so I'm not going to use this one, and I'm not going to use this one. These ones we will use. Okay, and so then I'll gently peel them up with that paper. And I'm just moving them to the other piece of paper where my other pieces are. Okay. And there we go. And those will just be our little top pieces. And then I want you to bake that for a full hour at whatever brand you are using recommended temperature. And then once they're out of the oven, we'll do some slight cleanup. But basically, we don't have to do any sanding or anything like that. They're pretty much going to be ready to go once they come out of the oven. Okay, and here they are out of the oven. So now, typically I would end up sanding them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand one pair and leave the other pair um, non-sanded. 
So let's see. Um, we'll do this one. This one I will sand, this one I'll leave unsanded, and we can see at the end of it which one looks better. All I'm going to do, since I do want to keep it as a matte finish, is I'm going to be sanding it with an 800 grit wet dry sandpaper. Uh, and then you'll see that it's much more tidied up and it will just look cleaner. Uh, but it's up to you whether you want to sand more. Right now I'm just going to quickly use my craft knife to just quickly trim up these edges where these little bits are. You can use sandpaper to clean that up as well if you're not confident using a blade. Though it generally does go quicker just using a craft knife. And I would repeat that with all of them. There we go. And the back looks fine. You just need to clean up here. And so I will sand these ones and these ones here and I'll leave these ones as they are once I have trimmed them up and then after that I will show you how they look. Okay, so I've just finished sanding these ones and now uh, you probably can, these are the most similar ones so you can probably see the difference there. Um, I will have cleared up any smudges but it will uh, make the clay uh, whiter if you're using souffle just simply because of the texture. However, as far as the texture goes, this is a beautiful smooth texture, whereas this one you can actually feel lumps and bumps in it. Uh, so it is up to you whether you want to just sand it to make it smooth and nice to the touch. Uh, but again, it's not a huge difference. However, if you're using a brand that doesn't have a texture in it, such as Souffle, uh, and you prefer to use something like Prima, which doesn't have texture, you're going to find that... Um, there's going to be quite a larger difference between a sanded version and a um, non-sanded version. So I would at least uh, sand with like an 800 grit just to give it an even matte finish. Okay, now I'm just going to quickly drill them. And I like to go from the back because then the pattern doesn't distract me. Uh, and I generally get the hole in the middle that way. You can of course uh, measure it out as well if you want. Okay, and also take notice how this is flexible. That is normal. If it is flexible, it means that you have baked your piece properly. And this is probably about a millimeter and a half thick, I'd say. No, no thicker than two millimeters. Uh, and generally, I would go for about two to three millimeters thickness for earrings in general. Uh, they can go a bit thinner if you want, but you're never going to be able to get the clay to be really rock hard unless you make it extremely thick which just doesn't really look that good for earrings um, so the clay being flexible is something that is completely normal and not something that you should worry about it actually means that you've baked your clay properly and that it won't break if it's uh, if it's not flexible it's going to break and that's something that you don't want so I'm just going to drill a hole in over there and I generally will do that at the tip of the spiral and then I'll flip it over and I will drill a hole on the other side. Okay, so now that I've all been drilled I want to just do one final little thing that is not completely necessary but will bring the colour out in the pieces. I want to buff them with some renaissance wax. Again, not necessary to finish the project at all, it's just kind of like a... Um, extra little additive that will um, give them a nice little shine. It will just bring out that colour. Even now if I rub that on, and it's a little blurry because of the wax, but even there you can see how that has brightened up the colours a little bit. Not sure how much the camera is able to pick that up. Basically you just take some of the wax, not too much, and you just rub that into the um, piece. And I'll repeat that with all of them including these little ones and this is where it's having being sanded is actually a good thing because it will buff up much nicer uh, than if it hadn't been sanded so we will be able to see the difference again uh, once these have been buffed so I'm just going to quickly fill them all in and then I'll show you okay now you can uh, buff those by hand but I tend to use my Dremel 3000 with its buffing wheel and all you do is you just grab one and turn your buffing wheel on. There you go. 
there and that's all you need to do and hopefully the camera can pick up how fleshy that is now and now I'm going to do the exact same thing with one of these and we can see the difference So hopefully there you can see that it's not, let me find the best spot there, there you go. So you can see that there you can see the bumps there and the texture on the piece just doesn't look quite as nice. And then I'll bring over this one and let me see if I can direct it in the exact same way. You can see that it is smoother, there we go. So that is why I tend to like sanding my pieces. So I'm going to buff them all and then we can assemble them. So now we're going to move on to um, uh, what, assembling our piece. So I've got an ear wire here and what I want to do is I just want to grip it between two pliers, grip the lip and then the base and then turn like so. And that means I only have to use one jump ring at the top. Okay, then just pop these two pieces together. I like to pop that um, seam of the jump ring inside. Then take your second jump ring, open that up, and place this on so that the earring wire faces the back. Like so. Right, and that is how you would assemble them. So let me bring them over. So there's the ones that we did not sand, and here are the ones that we did sand. So there's not a huge amount of difference, uh, but there is enough uh, that you can see it in person. And I just find that it gives a more professional finish, which is why I like sanding my pieces at least a little bit, even when I am using something like souffle clay. So let me just zoom in that you see that. So anyway, I do hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would like to support this channel, please do consider becoming a patron. I'll provide a link to the site in the description below the video. Uh, it really helps me out so that I can continue creating free tutorials like this one every week on YouTube. And also, if you have questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm not sure if I already said that, uh, but I will try to answer those as soon as I can. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.